Welcome back to Patrick Christie tonight. We are only on GB News and it is time now for our head to head. Is it ever OK to target public figures as part of a protest, specifically politicians? So Conservative MP Jacob Rees-Mogg was surrounded by pro-Palestine protesters just a few days ago after an appearance at Cardiff University. We can have a little look. And earlier on this year, pro-Palestinian protesters held a demonstration outside the home of MP Tobias Elwood with signs accusing him of being complicit in genocide. Now, one of my panel tonight feels very strongly about this. In my community, you can challenge me, but if you dare come near my house, believe me, if the police aren't going to take action, mm. I'll take action into my own hands because I'm not having my three-year-old daughter, my two-year-old son and my fiancé put in danger yeah. because a bunch of thugs want to turn up outside my house and intimidate. Uh, well, the man himself, Jonathan Gullis, is right here. And I am also joined by Blen, but sorry, Ben Glinecki, who is the National Secretary of the Revolutionary Communist Party. Um, look, Ben, I'll start with you on this one then. So you think it's all right, I take it, to target people like Jonathan, do you? Yeah, look, I'm, I'm not that worried about the, the feelings of, of MPs who have a massive platform to put forward their views on, that I think, very objectionable views objectionable views on Palestine and on, on what is what is taking place there, which is a genocide. I'm much more worried about the 100,000 people who have been murdered and maimed by the Israeli regime, which is supported by the Tory government. Jonathan, I mean, your views on... I've got no issue with people having a peaceful demonstration outside my office, which they can arrange with the police, and indeed have had those in the past. I don't even mind outside certain events. So, you know, recently at Newcastle's Lyme, golf course, there was people at the entrance, but they stood there, they didn't enter the grounds, they didn't cease to intimidate. But when we had, as we saw in Stoke-on-Trent, in Shelton, former His Book to Hear members organising a protest, entering the premises, screaming and shouting in the faces of women and young girls who were present at our fundraiser event. Mm. That's trying to undermine democracy. In fact, I held a Westminster Hall debate on this very issue today regarding the Khan Review that looked at right. this kind of intimidation of our democracy. Going to people's homes. Look, it's, it's, uh, I, think, I think what you're really angry about is that for once, what's made the headlines is the real anger that exists in among, among hundreds of thousands, even no, I would say millions of people is, in this country. Is it all right going to people's homes, though? Look, is it, is it all right to, to drop bombs on... I mean, is 50-something is thousand homes have been destroyed, 1.5 to 1.9 million people displacing? Is that all right? That is the position of the government, that they support the Israeli government. Is that all right? Well, it's not all right to keep hostages, as Hamas have done, and for many though, in, the, uh, in Gaza who have been helping to keep those hostages hidden away from the Israeli forces so we can free them. It's not OK for the fact that they've been obviously using millions of dollars of uh, aid to allow them the leadership of uh, Hamas to live in five star luxury in the middle of Qatar, away from the people who actually need that aid on the ground. It's not OK for Hamas to steal aid, food, water from the people of Gaza when it's been getting in to that country because ultimately they're using it for their so-called freedom fighters. These are terrorists. They need to be described as that. And ultimately, there's a lot of people on these hate marches that are sadly trying to intimidate uh, what's going on and actually making this right. country safe, unsafe for Jews to walk the streets, which I mean, is disgusting. OK, I mean, you, you're shaking your head there. I mean, there is a... I think genuine school of thought that says some of the tactics are very intimidatory. No, I, look, when you hear language like that, hate marches and mobs and this kind of thing, what on earth... Look, people can say whatever they like. People can... Like, politicians can, can basically back genocide all, all the way to the hilt and, and, uh, and not, and not criticise, not, not say anything about it. You, I am going to organise... The Revolutionary Communist Party is going to organise protests against that and organise... Can, can I just ask on, on that? Revolutionary Communist Party. I mean, what, what, what kind of revolution are we talking about here? A revolution is a fundamental change, right? I don't think... Look at Parliament right now, 650 MPs. I mean, you're just talking about George Galloway. Mm. That's one who has an, a different opinion. Apart from that, there is a, a conspiracy of silence. No one is criticising what is going on. The Labour Party, the Tories, they're all on the same well, side here. What does your revolution look like, mate? What is it? It, lo it looks like ordinary people taking control over their own lives. Ordinary people 
running society for themselves. You see that in a, in a very small way in strikes, for example. I'm a big fan of strike action, big fan of the unions. That's working class people, that's ordinary people right. taking control of their workplace out of the hands of the rich and the bosses and all those kind of people who run it. That's, the kind, that's what I'm in favour of. I'm not in favour of 650 politicians okay. uh, just in a, in a room full of hot air uh -huh. talking rubbish while a genocide takes place. I think it goes to the point, though, still, that Patrick posed to you earlier, which is absolutely outside of Parliament you can demonstrate, outside offices, I've got no issue with that whatsoever, but homes, MPs' homes, that's their loved ones, that's their family members. At the end of the day, with the greatest respect, my, my fiancé is a former Labour Party member. She's never voted Conservative in her life. She might only be willing to vote Conservative in the next election so I can keep my job, and that's, even, that's an if, OK? <laughs> and I say that jokingly before the mirror loses its mind over that joke. But at the end of the day, you know, I don't live in some echo chamber or some mm. bubble at the end of the day, but my three-year-old, my three-and-a-half-year-old, my two-year-old don't deserve to hear screaming and shouting outside their house when they're trying to go to sleep at night, rest. when at the end of the day, those same people could still come peacefully outside my office, which is just on Tunstall High Street. It's got enough photos of me on it to make sure it's well in view where people know where I am. Said, and they can you, make okay. their voice be heard. In fact, I'd happily invite those people, as I did with former trade unions who, uh, regarding schools. I've sat down at the table with all them. Right, I've listened right. to them for two hours so they can hear their views. You, you, you said, come on, give it a rest, then, when he was talking about his three-year-old. Doesn't bother yeah, you? But, well, because your policies and your government's policies reach into the homes of every single person in this country. In the, it, was at the, it was the start of this year, there was that study came out that said in the decade since 2011, a million people who live in poverty have died, like excess deaths among a million people. That is the policies of, of, of austerity, of your government that have done that. Your policies reach into, into all of our homes and you get upset and, and, and there's a genocide going on across the world which, which your government It's not supports. a genocide, by the way. It's not a genocide. Of I mean, that's just factually don't, inaccurate. Don't rubbish. No, but that's, no, the rubbish is to claim it's a genocide when actually it's not. What Israel is doing is trying to make sure that your Hamas policies... doesn't have its tentacles in Gaza and stop the people of Gaza having the ability... So 100,000 dead and maimed is... Well, is, I'm, not is gonna, that, that's, I'm, that's I'm policy, certainly not going to buy figures from the Hamas health ministry who have got their own agenda with the greatest respect at the end of the day. There are figures out there that are disputed and at the end of the day I'll, I'll go with the figures that I trust. Uh, how, how many dead would be but all I would say, to you? Well, I don't want anyone to be dead, but what I don't want to see is, as we did see, 1,200 innocent Israelis and other nationalities brutally murdered Could... by Hamas terrorists going into the homes, killing, maiming children, raping women, as we know has happened. That's an abomination. Those Hamas terrorists need to be right. shot and found as much as possible, and then the people of Gaza can be well, free of this barbaric regime. That, but it's not 100,000, is right, it? This is a figure right. from the Hamas health ministry. Uh, uh, um, so, Mike, is it, Mike, where, where does this end, for, as far as you're concerned? Because... If your logic is, which I can understand, by the way, but could that not conceivably then be used to justify anything? Could that not conceivably be used to justify, like, physical action against Jonathan right now or, or other people, etc., or breaking into their homes or, or completely or blowing this place up? You know, could it not? No, no one's, no one's talking about breaking into MP homes. No one's talking about, about blowing anything up. That is, that's not the policy at all. That's not the approach. That's not my approach. No, what we want to do... Is, is organised protest. And actually, this, like, it's, it's a bit rich, saying, oh, yeah, come along, like, protest outside my... Your government has passed legislation that, make, that, that makes it very hard to take strike action now, that, like, the police crime sense... We've seen courts. the amount of strikes we've had it's in the hard. NHS and the amount of strikes we've seen in schools. Have you, have you seen the Minimum Service Level Act? And that's a great piece of legislation to make sure <laughs> yeah. our schools stay open, our NHS keeps running, because it, it, it's an abomination it limits the right that the taxpayer has had to... No, no, your government has attacked the right to strike, has attacked the right to strike has has Your government has attacked the right... That is an attack on the right to strike. That is a it's limitation. not an attack on the right to strike. That is a limitation on the right to strike. It's doing what many other mainstream European countries it have done, is which is making sure the right that we have the ability for our public and services to still run. you've so, passed the police crime sentencing courts Great piece of legislation as well. which also limits the ability of people to protest. Well, would you and then you say, oh, I'm all in favour of protest. No, because, because actually, because, again, whenever there's been a protest organised, for example, in Hanley Town Square regarding the Gaza issue, it's gone on peacefully, it's not caused any major issues. You called, it, you called it, them it, hate marches earlier, what's that about? Well, the hate marches we see in London, absolutely, they are hate marches. We see people with anti-Semitic banners, we see people chanting jihadist terms, we've seen the projection on the tower saying from the river to the sea, which means the er eradication of the Israeli state and the Jewish people within it. So ultimately, they are hate marches, that's what the British public sees every time these are happening and they're bored. That's not Not senseless true, though, of it? seeing Stoke on Trent and Staffordshire police officers having to come down to London to man these streets when we've right. got crimes on our streets that need solving. You, you our police are being dragged to deal with the liberal elites like Tarquin and that you, lot who want to make their point. Right. Would, would, would you protest outside his house? I don't know where his house is. I've got no particular interest in doing that. I've got no. I've got other things to be doing, to be honest. But MPs in general, you'd you'd happily because the other argument to it is that it silences them. So you know, I, I've been at events before where I've seen politicians like Jacob Rees-Mogg or someone like that who I appreciate just still have a platform right here. But 
other MPs or people with a voice, if you're trying to silence them... Oh, look, come on. Is that not an issue? And I don't think anyone... I mean, do you really think that MPs in this country are having their freedom of speech limited? They can say anything they like in Parliament. They can come they on can the TV, scared, though, on the media. They are human beings. There are particularly women, by the way, who have been... Yeah, like, listen, dreadful stuff sent through. My, Death threats, rape threats. My comrades, my, like, members of the Revolutionary Communist Party, have been arrested on these Palestine demos for nothing, released afterwards without charge, haven't done anything just to get them off the street, just to, just to get them off the demos, basically. Uh, and, and comrades of mine internationally, the Revolutionary Communist International in what? the US, in Canada, they're getting beaten up by the police right now. Their freedom of speech is being attacked, not MPs who can say whatever they like whenever they want. Very quickly, final word on it. I mean, you got bulletproof cling film, you said. Well, I mean, well done, Patrick. I did obviously cock up when I said uh, that on air. I was talking about bulletproof film on the window. Yeah. Uh, obviously, I, I did muck up, on, but well done for getting that gag in. I'm sure that will get some likes on Twitter. I but actually didn't mean that, me, to be fair. But, but there let we go. Me but be yeah. clear that no one's trying to deny anyone's free speech. What we're simply saying is that if you want to make your voice heard, there are ways to go about that still democratically. As I say, I will take a process outside my office any day of the week, as long as it's organised through the police, through the normal measures, in okay. order to make sure it's carried out peacefully and my staff can continue their job right, day look, in, day out. Both of you. Thank you. Good stuff. That. That's Jonathan and Ben there. Um, right, look, there's still loads more to come coming up. Uh, Health Minister Victoria Atkins insisted today that it was vital biological sex is respected and that the NHS must not eradicate women and avoid using artificial language in the name of inclusivity. The author and director of the Advocacy at Sex Matters, Helen Joyce, will be giving her meat... Uh, sorry, my take next. But 